Hi guys, guess what? Yet another CRTTV repair video. Yeah. But, maybe you people like it, I don't know. Uh, a quick preamble, if you will. I'm not repairing this as my job. I don't have any job currently, I'm just student. But I do casual repairs if I have a spare time. So if I don't make any videos uh, about the repairs anymore, then that just means that um, I don't have anything to show you. It doesn't mean that I completely don't want to make a video. Anyway, this time it's Rainford. Problem. And doesn't want to start yet again. Mm. Power indicator is like lit up, but nothing else. So I'm gonna plug it in. Now you need to listen because it emits a faint noise. You can see power indicator lit up and maybe you'll be able to hear the sound. I guess you heard the chick 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 kind of stuff. Now, what I think problem is in this particular set? Well, most likely a dried up electrolytics somewhere. Why I do... why I think so? <coughs> well guys, I have already uh, repaired similar set with similar problem, but that set even uh, when you switch it on, it blink. Essentially, the power indicator was blinking and emitting same kind of noise like chick. It lights up, it emits noise, goes off, and cycles. So anyway, let me pop the cover open, and I'll examine the board, and I'll show you the result. I mean the board, whatever. And I forgot to show you the model. It's in Ukrainian, but. Go figure. Anyway, what it says is basically color television set, supply voltage 220 volts 50 hertz, power consumption 85 watts. Model is TVF5583TC. And it actually even have, even has, I should say, kind of warranty void sticker. Which I'll already ruined. Oh yeah, that's a good feeling. So the cover is off. Discharging picture tube as you can see. And from what I from what I can see is mm, no obviously bulged capacitors here. Which uh, sort of good, sort of bad. Obviously bulged caps will tell me for sure what cap I need to replace. If I don't have any obviously bulged caps, I'll have to take the chassis out and use my ESR meter to find the problem. Now I'm very very inclined that it's really a dried up electrolytic somewhere which have too high ESR which causes the supply to have problems starting up because of too much ripple on the output and not the short on the output because again power supplies usually squeal when they have a short on the output this one just ticks kind of it's, it, it have problems starting up like it starts up then sees excessive ripple and shuts off <laughs> I need to take Jesse out, what can I do? No obviously well bulge stuff. Damn. Alright. So I did some testing with ESR meter. And I found that this capacitor, one microfarad 150 volt have uh, kinda off the ESR of about 100 ohms. As well as if you can see it, gonna turn on light. Oh, good. 
as well as this, which is 3.3 microfarad 160 volt, and this 10 microfarad 63 volts. I'm gonna rotate the board around and I'll show you the readings on the ESR meter. Okay, so let's start with 3.3 uh, microfarads. You can see barely moves. It's disconnected, connected. Awful. Now 10 microfarads. Same kind of deal. And now one microfarad. Very similar results. So I'm gonna desolder them, replace them, and we'll see will this board be no junk anymore. By the way, I did find some bad joints again. Well, they're not really really bad, but not really great either. I'll try to show you. Yeah, this joint. It looks okay on camera for some reason, but in real life it's awful. And this joint is ugly, and uh, this soldering is ugly as well. So, this has, these are three replacement caps. And as you can see, one microfarad 150 volt, 4.7160. I did. I don't have 3.3. 4.7 is the closest what I can find. We'll see. Should should be well. 10 microfarad 63 volts. Now they are kind of small capacitance and kind of high voltage, so ESR should be like not like. Yep. Uh, less than one ohm. This sh it should be more than one ohm, but still you can see for yourself. So that's awkward. One microfarad, about ten ohms. Four point seven microfarad. Let me connect it now. About I don't know four or five and uh, ten microfarads. About one point five. So next one I'm gonna do is replace those. So guys, I did uh, change those capacitors and no luck. Things still makes exactly same noise and. So I started to think maybe it is having problem with short on the output. So I decided to, ta to take a look at the horizontal upper output transistor, which used to be here, as you can see from my export thermal compound. And this transistor is right here. It's a BU808DFI. Essentially horizontal output high voltage transistor, BJT, with built-in base emitter resistor as well as Collector emitter protection diode. So to check it out, to check is it uh, okay or not, you need a multimeter that can test diodes. And essentially, pinout is this base collector emitter. Now, since in NPN you put positive probe to the base and negative to the other two terminals. Now let's do this base emitter first, and we have voltage drop of. 165 millivolts. That seems legible, alright. Now we do collector emitter. Oh, base collector. Okay, connected. 280 millivolts. Now that's kind of low. Now another. You may think that that's enough and the transistor is kind of working, but stop it. You need to check as well collector emitter in both ways. Now, in uh, usual way, I mean black probe to emitter, 
positive to collector there should be nothing in reverse there will be you will see a voltage drop of a built-in protection diet but right now you should see nothing but you see 100 millivolts worth of voltage drop now i'm gonna reverse the, vol the probes around it's a pain in the ass let me tell you Stay there, you son of a... Same kind of voltage drop, a little bit higher, but... That's a giveaway that this transistor is bad. So I'm gonna replace it with 2SD1555, which is horizontal output transistor as well, features base emitter um, resistor as well, as well as... Uh, uh, protection diode between collector and emitter so i'm gonna put it in put the chassis back in and see will this tv start up or not i hope it should so new transistor is there as you can see thermal th removed old thermal compound put new thermal compound everything is good let's apply some additional flux Let's solder this bastard with a soldering gun, because... Now... Let's take a look at the job. I'd call that good enough. Next, testing. Another quick tip. Sometimes you will have to desolder or disconnect so-called CRT earth or earth, whatever. It's basically this strap which connects outer aqueduct, which is gonna be ground. It should be connected to ground on the neck board. Usually by this, in this set, by this wire. So, if you did desolder it, you must connect it back. Do not run the set without this, because... Uh, ah, like... Like a famous sticker says, crap happens. Well, not crap, but another word, whatever. You catch my drift, I guess. So now, the moment of truth. There we go. Hmm. Quiet. Quiet, that's good. So power supply probably is not having problems with startup anymore. Always unplug. If you're gonna see what's up so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna touch with one hand only the heatsink one at a time on the power supply ic and the flyback driver horizontal output transistor i mean both are cold so the tv i guess is in standby mode this time I have a remote, so I'm gonna try it out again with a remote. Let me do the same procedure. Let's hit the power button, shall we? Hmm. Maybe a remote is not working, let's try this. Hmm. It turned green, but there is nothing on the screen. That's weird. And yes, 
I don't hear horizontal starting up. That's bad. So probably this TV is not so easy to repair as I thought. Damn. What's your problem? Most uh, well, power supplies are starting to get a little bit lukewarm. Hmm. Do we have any HD? I'm gonna check and return to you. Oh man. It actually took me a lot, a lot of time. And remember, I said that it will replace a horizontal output transistor. It was a dumb idea because BU808 DFI was Darlington, and I replaced it with D1555, which is ordinary H2T horizontal output transistor. So in order to make it work, I needed to make few changes to the schematic. Right now, you will see a chunk of schematic with uh, annotations to it which components I changed in order to make it work. Alright, so if you can see, also added heatsink to the transistor and I um, uh, changed the transistor D155 to D5072. This one heats up much less because it has higher gain. It's still not a Darlington, just an ordinary NPN, but with a higher gain and works marvelously. But then I encountered another problem in form of what I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, TV is in standby. You hit it with a remote. Hmm. And you can see that raster is shifted, shifted to left, which is awful. But I found an easy fix for it, which is this mysterious assembly hidden in heat shrink. That is a one nanofarad resistor bypassed with a or rather, one, for 470k resistor bypassed with one nanofarad capacitor, and I'm gonna apply this from the HOT output of the video processor to the ground, and the scene will be all right. Video processor is this I see in this case to the pin 48 which is somewhere here in this area you need to count it if you want so I'm gonna apply this from the other side because it's easier for me to do so and you will see that the thing will work just fine I don't know why in the first place it requires me to do such magic stuff in order to make it work but actually with D155 raster, with, raster was alright Oh, okay, perfect raster, but the thing heated up so much that despite all the modifications that I tried to decrease the, the thing heating up, it's still like like a soldering iron. So I decided to check this transistor out, and this transistor works marvelously, as I mentioned, but requires but shifts the raster to the left. But I'm gonna apply that magic stuff and I'll and I'll show you the result. So here is the board soldered on and insulated using this piece of foam. Do not use paper or other or cardboard or whatever because if then eventually direct water to itself and essentially become conductive and you don't want that. Foam doesn't give a crap about humidity. Let's see, heat shrunk and foam. Foam acting more like spacer to avoid the ends of the pins to poke through the heat shrink. Heat shrink alone provides sufficient insulation because it's low voltage stuff. But the foam acts as a spacer to prevent the pin poking through the heat shrink as I mentioned earlier. 
So, let's plug it in. And I'm plugging through a bellish 200 watts, but I plugged this time, I plugged the ghost coil in. So, if I'm gonna plug it in right now, you'll see essentially lamp, two lamps glowing up bright because PTC is still cold. But that's okay. And it will fade out eventually. As I mentioned. Now let's switch it in and we'll see. Does my trick work or not? Oh, excuse me, it's... That's just problems with... Because I plugged crude antenna in, but you can see now that the raster is in its place. I'm gonna try to pick something up on this piece of wire if I can. If I can't, I, you will see nothing. If I can, you will see me showing something. I don't know. And you can see that it is running just fine. I measured some temperatures using my multimeter. And uh, you can see this thin heatsink, which it's an additional heatsink that I put on the horizontal output transistor. And temperature of this combined heatsink is 60 degrees Celsius after one hour, which is cool. No, well, not really cool, but okay. And another heatsink, the sky is vertical deflection and it's about 70 degrees Celsius, which is not really low, but it's fun. And uh, I want to notice that you can touch this and that with CRTTV running because that's secondary ground essentially. But do not this heatsink, you can see this one, is a power supply and it's directly can be directly connected to primary side cold to cold side of primary which depending on the plugs that you're using I'm not using polarized plugs as you can see so this heating can be hot corresponding to earth ground so I can receive quite a nice shock so don't do that picture is fine as you can see so I say let's put the cover back on and thanks for watching see ya